Hello, this is Mark Tucker with another video in the series on APL components for viewers of the Dabble Lab channel. In this video, we'll explore the basics of the Vector Graphic component and Alexa Vector Graphics, or AVG. If you want to follow along in APL Ninja, look for the project link in the description. Here we go. In some ways, the Vector Graphic builds on things that we learned with the image component, but instead of ping and JPEG bitmap files, it uses vectors. So here in our uh, project under main templates, we have a, our main container component and a vector graphic. Uh, things that you'll notice that are similar to the image component is there's a height and width, there's a scale property, and there is a source property. In this case, we're saying that the, uh, what's going to be shown um, in the vector graphic component is going to be graph paper. And the width and height that it's going to take up is the complete vertical um, height and um, you know, viewport width and viewport height um, of, the, of the viewport that we're on and that we're going to scale the image to have it be a best fit. The, remember when we were talking about containers, the absolute uh, position just means that it's on the back layer and we can layer other things on top of it. Um, and just so you know, um, just really quickly, the, anytime that we're doing vector graphics, that it is a touchable component. And so you can uh, you know, capture, in this case, an on-press event and then um, send an event so you can you can check to, to, to test that this is a, um, a vector graphic is a touchable uh, component so those that's kind of the basics of of the you know component itself the the vector graphic component doesn't have a lot of properties um, but uh, uh, it, it behaves very similar to the image component so we're going to talk more about what's being shown in a vector graphic component. The thing that's being shown is an Alexa vector graphic or an AVG. Um, so if you're you know, new to APL, that's going to be a, a new term to you. When, you're, when you've done web development in the past or I guess other types of development, uh, you're used to being able to use bitmap images or um, SVG, which would be scalable vector graphics. Um, and so there are some similarities between SVG and AVG. And if you want to use an, uh, an SVG in APL, then it needs to be converted to an AVG first. So let's, let's kind of walk through that process and, uh, and then we can dive into some you know, so kind of the behind the scenes, uh, like what is this source property really pointing to and, and what, you know, what can we do with that? But uh, let's go ahead, the, a good place to start <clears throat> with this would be uh, something like Font Awesome. It's been around for a long time. Uh, free uh, you know, images to be to use in your projects, and Font Awesome has a folder full of uh, scalable vector graphics. So if we were to go in here and let's say let's just pick regular, we could take a look at, for example, uh, this address book uh, component. So we see the, the, the address book here, and we could uh, you know, very simply do uh, save image as and go ahead and save it locally uh, to our file system. But let's dive into what is a scalable vector graphic really behind the scenes. Um, let's go ahead and copy the, the raw contents of uh, what makes up this vector graphic. And we're going to put it into this uh, SVG viewer tool. Uh, we're going to go ahead and optimize it, which is like remove things that we don't need and make it a little bit prettier. But what you notice is that off here on the right hand side, this graphic is, uh, this image is being shown. And you'll notice that uh, SVG is based off of XML. So there's a beginning SVG tag, an end SVG tag, there's a path tag that closes here. It's, you've got this, uh, all this stuff here in the middle where it, uh, um, we'll have to you know, figure out what that all means, but it's, it's this code in here in the middle that defines what this image is. And then you notice that uh, as we you know, make the image smaller, um, nothing's changing. Uh, the same 
these same uh, calculations or equation um, that's determining the SVG doesn't change. So you could even make this really big. So let's say we're going to go you know, bigger. We're now here with just the head, uh, the bottom part. We, you know, the bigger that we get, uh, it doesn't really matter because uh, the, we don't get any pixelation. Um, so what does all, the, all this mean? Well, one of the first things that you need to, to uh, understand is that there's this idea of a view box. And just think of that as like a, a, a canvas just for the SVG itself. And it's, it's got a coordinate zero, zero, which is your you know, top left. And it's going to go um, 448 pixels across and 512 pixels down. So you've defined this, um, this canvas where this SVG is going to be drawn. And um, each of these commands, like this M means something, this C means something, uh, so does, you know, the, the, each of these different letters and number combinations mean things, and you'll notice means things, and it, it ends in, uh, in a Z. Um, so you could, you know, go and look at, okay, for the path object, uh, like M is, is a move to, so it's going to be like, this is, I'm going to move and, and have the starting point be here, and I'm going to be able to do a line uh, to another location, or, you know, a horizontal line or a vertical line, and, you know, so you'll notice how, you know, I'm going to start here with M, and then this is the coordinate where I'm going to move to, and then I'm going to do a horizontal line over to 90, a vertical line down to 90, a horizontal back over 10. I'm going to do a line going over to 10, 10. So you're just you're kind of drawing out what that's going to look like, and then to end that path, you're going to do Z, which will take you from whatever point you're at and snap it back to um, the starting point. So... That's what's happening uh, behind the scenes here. Um, so what, what are we going to do with this when we want to use it in um, an Alexa APL screen? So let's go back here to our project. And um, on our file system, I've, I've downloaded that address book, SVG. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag and drop the SVG here. And what you'll notice is here... Um, Let's see, I'm going to move the, change this around just a little bit. So we've got a container and we've got a vector graphic already here, which is our graph paper. We're going to go ahead and take this uh, vector graphic that was imported in and we're going to put it um, right below this one here. Let's take a look, do that. There we go. And we don't need this container that uh, it pasted it for us. So we can get rid of that. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice on this new vector graphic is its source is now called address book. And um, the file on the file system was named uh, address-book lowercase. And so when we import it in, it's gonna take that, whatever we named that SVG file, and it's going to use that as the name of our source. And so similarly, we've got a height and width, and notice um, how that um, 448 and 512 matches up with this 448 and 512 here. So it's, it's just setting the size of the vector graphic to be exactly the same size as um, the, the, you know, the um, vector graphic that's behind the scenes of the vector graphic component. Um, and that we're going to do a best fit to, to fit that. So, you know, we, we're not set to that. Let's say that we have like some sort of a header and we want this in the header and the header is going to be 100 height. Then we don't really have to specify um, both of these. Um, and we're just saying best fit. So it could be, you know, 200. So we can control how, um, you know, how we want it. We don't have to keep it the same size as what the uh, the viewport was set as, or the view box was set as in, in the AVG. So let's take a look um, at this address book component. So if you come up here out of main templates into this graphics section, this is where your um, Alexa vector graphics are going to be defined. So you can define them up here. 
Uh, notice we have one called graph paper and one called address book, and we come down here into vector graphics. Our first one is uh, sources graph paper, and the uh, other one is address book. So all we're doing is we're referencing in our source the name that we used under graphics here. So take a, let's take a look at address book. Notice that the width and height of the vector graphic itself is the same as the um, view box size that was set. Now notice here under the data property, we say we're going to start with an M. We're going to move to 436, 160. So let's see what happens over here. We go down here, we've defined now in this Alexa, uh, Alexa vector graphic in our uh, items array that has one item of path. Notice how it is M436, 160. So really all we're doing is taking this value that was defined as XML for a, an SVG, and it's being converted into a JSON format, which is our Alexa vector graphic. So that's, that's kind of behind the scenes what's happening um, with that. Notice that we have a property here um, for what the fill is. So that's right now we've got the, the, the color. We could change it to um, you know, red here. We can, we, we can hard code what, the, what color we want the vector graphic to be, but really what we probably wanna do is we want to go ahead and uh, just define some parameters. So just like in uh, when we're creating our own components with layouts, there's a parameters array, and we're gonna create a parameter called fill color. Um, and so we can uh, just define this as, as fill color here, and we can change this to, um, to a data binding expression for fill color. And then down here on our component, we can define that we want to set the fill color of this to something like red. So now there's probably some mistake I've got here. Oh, right here we added parameters um, and I forgot a comma here. Ta-da, there we go. Um, so we could change this to you know yellow. We could set you know, specific colors, whatever we want. Um, well, let's go ahead and set this to green. All right, so we've got, uh, we, we, we've now Kind of, uh, kind of gone back on our layers of onions. And so at the outer layer, we have a vector graphic where we're setting the fill color property to green, but that's really wrapping this um, AVG called address book. So here in the AVG for address book, it's really wrapping an, uh, items. And in this case, we have a path item um, and we're setting the fill color to, to the color that we want. Now we could get you know, fancier here with, uh, with parameters because you could uh, give a parameter a name and in this case, the name is going to be fill color um, and maybe we want to go ahead and define a default on this and maybe the default we want to be pink. Um, so now, um, right now it's green because we defined the, the, the property as green and now it's, do this, delete that, and now it's pink uh, because it's using the default. So just uh, standard stuff that you can do when you're doing parameters. Um, so that's, uh, that's, that's the basic of using um, vector graphics and how you can take a, an SVG and convert it into an AVG um, and, uh, and be good to go there. The last thing though I want to show you was this graph paper. Um, because um, with graph paper, if you look at, um, we've got a basic path as well, but we've got a fill defined as a resource grid pattern. And this is just the, you know, the basic you know, path data. We're gonna you know, move to coordinate zero, zero, and then we're going to go to the the you know the whole the width and the whole viewport you know um, width and height and and we're just kind of drawing a a, a box making this whole thing um, fill up this whole space here. 
but the fill is actually based on a resource which is based on a pattern. And in this case, the pattern is also a vector graphic of type path, where we set that the background color is going to be white and the stroke is going to be cyan. But notice the canvas for this um, AVG that we're using as the grid pattern is 40 by 40. So we're gonna to move to coordinate zero, zero, um, like right up here. And we're gonna go um, across 40, down 40, um, back to zero, and then Z is gonna take us back up to the top. So we're defining one, one cell, um, one you know, uh, square in our grid. And that's what we're defining our grid pattern as, just one. And then what we're taking is we're saying, I want you to, to copy that grid pattern over and over and over again until it fills up this whole space. And then that uh, vector graphic for the graph paper is what's going to fill this whole area. Um, so that's, uh, that's a little bit about that part. Um, just quickly looking at some of the documentation so like we said that there's not really a lot going on for our vector graphic component itself. Uh, we've used scale and source. Uh, there's a lot more detail on what you can do with the Alexa vector graphics format itself. So the object has you know, a data property and items and things that you would typically see. And this is where we, we talked about our uh, parameters that we can pass in. We can define resources. Uh, there's just a number of things that you can do, but in, uh, there are three different, I guess, uh, things that can make up an Alexa vector graphic. One of them is a path item, which is what we looked at. So the type was set to path and we could set the fill and set the path data and set the stroke. Um, but there's, there's a lot more properties here that you could play with, um, especially if you wanted to get into animating them. Um, so AVG path is one of them. There's an AVG group, which is the ability to group multiple items. Let's see if we have a, an example of that. Oh, not really a good one. Um, but you can group different uh, paths together into a group, and then you can assign properties to the group. And then the last one is, a, a, is an uh, Alexa Vector Graphics text item, so type text. So you can have text and pass and group those together and make more and more complex um, vector graphics if you want. Um, so that's uh, some of the details behind the scenes there. Um, and that is going to cover what we want to talk about with SVGs. So in this episode, we learned about the vector graphics uh, component, um, SVGs, AVGs, vector patterns, and touchable properties. In the next video, we'll explore how to use the touch wrapper component. Um, I hope this video was helpful. Please let me know with a like or a share. Thank you for watching.